Hey there everyone, Hatayish here, your programming friend from YouTube. In this video, I would like to answer a very important question, what is Mocha and why we want to learn Mocha alongside with MongoDB. First and foremost, it is not compulsory to learn Mocha with MongoDB, but it is a good practice that you have some knowledge of Mocha. Mocha is a testing framework, but why do we need it? That's going to be an important question we will be answering in this particular video. Now, apart from this, also what we will understand are some tips and tricks about MongoDB or these tips are applicable on any given databases. So let's move forward and I would like to present my analogy here. MongoDB, I consider all databases as big, gigantic dogs, powerful, but lazy. Now, before we move further, let me just give you a brief idea. When we deploy these MongoDB or any big scale application, usually databases are put on its separate instance. You can just assume they are put onto a separate computer. From these computer, they get a connection from, from the server, whether that's Node.js or Ruby on Rails or any application built in Java or JavaScript. Now, when we connect to these databases, which are relying on a separate instance, the connection is never instant. And that's why I call them lazy dogs. I consider dogs as to be uh, the photo here that you see is the St. Bernard dog. In case you don't know anything about dog, don't worry, I'll explain a little bit. Now, these dogs are very powerful, very, very powerful, but they are very lazy. You don't see these dogs around uh, running here and there, just like you see small dogs like Chihuahuas or any other breed but they are very powerful. Once they start up and they want to mess around things, they can just create a whole lot of nonsense. So that's why I call them as St. Bernard's. So remember this always, whenever there is a database, it is absolutely powerful, but it is going to be a little bit lazy. So anything that you want to do with the database is never going to be instant, although it looks very instant because the processor nowadays are very powerful and they do almost everything instant, but it is never instant. So remember this word, I'll touch on this subject a little bit later here. Now coming on to this one of the previous slides here that we prepared, you can see we do have a name syntax here. Some of them have core, some of them have age. So we do, know, do, uh, we do know something about this kind of a schema that nothing of the rule is default implemented on us. We need to take care of it by ourselves. If we want to say that there should be no record in our databases that should, have, uh, that should not have name, we absolutely can do it. We can put a restriction that no record should exist without name or without email. All these restrictions definitely can be implemented, but also need to be tested that whatever we are implementing is absolutely going right. And this implementation, this testing of things that whether certain things are done right or not, here comes the big picture of Mocha. So before we go into the Mocha, let's also introduce the analogy of MongoDB. Now, terminologies in MongoDB can be a little bit confusing. I will totally give you on that. Now, we will touch upon the umbrella of MongoDB in the upcoming videos, but here I have been calling MongoDB as a database, but we also understand that it creates databases. So for the new beginner, it can be a little bit confusing. So always understand the MongoDB is a tool that can collect, that can create multiple databases. So for instance, we do have database one here and database two here. Database one is for completely different application or completely different project that you're working. And database two is for completely different project that you're working on. Now, since if we will have just only one database, that is gonna be obviously problematic. So MongoDB allows you to create separate instance of databases. So whenever you need to work on project one, you can connect to database one. And whenever you need to connect to some other project, you can create database two. And similarly, you can create multiple databases. And in the very first of the videos, I told you that MongoDB is a collection of documents. And here's a quick example of collection of document. Inside the databases, you can have multiple collection. Now, I would not call it like multiple tables. They are collection, completely different from MySQL or any other databases. Just always call them collection of documents. So for example, we do have a collection of users here. Uh, I'm just duplicating them or simply showing them by John and Rahul and Alice. Uh, but inside that, there can be a big object. So each document, can contain of multiple values, for example, name, email, IDs, 
uh, maybe phone number, maybe course count, how many course they have purchased and all other information. But just for representation purpose, consider this green blocks as simply a document uh, which can be complicated or may not be. Okay, so you are also allowed to create multiple collections into uh, each databases. For example, let's just say I have a website learncodeonline.in. So we create a user as a separate collection which uh, deals with all your details like name, email, phone number, your password, uh, some of the other things as well. But we do also have another collection which is just for courses, which take cares about course name, course images, course videos, document files, and all other things. Similarly, there can be multiple other collections as well. For example, uh, one can be there for uh, some internal like exams. Uh, so there can be multiple collections here. So don't ever get confused. MangoDB is a tool to create databases and you can create multiple databases now moving further now you all understand about this now let's come back onto the topic that why do we need mocha and what actually is mocha for this we are going to refer to this diagram here again now this diagram simply depicts that uh, read and write operations so you want to do a simple read and write operation so you have fired the command whatever that is we are going to learn it later on you have fired that command to the databases and database is going to reply you back that hey the read operation was successful or the write operation was successful usually it looks very instant but internally it is not it is not instant there is some amount of wait here some amount of delay that delay may be fractions of second or maybe sometimes like five seconds or three seconds but it is always going to be there whenever there is a delay in reply Every programming language has got some way of dealing up with asynchronous replies. Whenever there is a delay, we call them asynchronous reply because it's not instant. Uh, it is also almost similar when you ask something from a website and you wait that when the website is going to reply us something back. Obviously, just waiting for that reply may be not so good for the application because it increases the load time. But... If you, if you follow the asynchronous practice, that means one thing, maybe a thread or maybe anything else, is waiting for that reply and in the meantime, everything else is working properly. This is known as asynchronous reply. In the world of JavaScript, we deal with them using promises. A promise is simply a promise that, hey, I asked you something and you need to reply me back in the future. I'm not asking you an instant reply, I'm asking you for a reply in the future. I'm not saying it's always going to be a good reply. It can be an error as well, but definitely there is going to be something that comes up later in the future. And that is your promises. Now, don't worry about promises. I will talk about, I will throw up a quick refresher on the promises in JavaScript when we are going to touch the Mocha framework. Right now, we don't need it right now. Okay, so since we know that there is always an asynchronous reply, means there is always a wait, we need a JavaScript testing frameworks that can deal up with especially the situation of asynchronous. And here I present to you the Mocha. Mocha is one of the industry standards of writing testing suites for uh, databases, especially uh, the Mongo. It works absolutely like a charm with Node.js and that's why it is very high on popularity. So let's have a quick look on the Mocha and give you brief detail about that. Obviously, we are going to touch that in quite thorough detail later on into the course. But right now, we can see Manga is a feature-rich JavaScript testing framework on Node.js. And the best part about it is it's make asynchronous testing simple and fun. And that's our goal with MongoDB because, you know, nothing is instant replied. So there we go. And just to give you a brief idea that Mocha is super, super easy to work on with, just a brief idea. Uh, there are usually some describe blocks and some it blocks. By the block, I mean just, just the functions and super easy to write. We just make some assertion that probably this is true. And this test case replies us back that, yeah, this was true. This was not true. Your test, your test passed and your test failed. So here comes the Mocha. And we are going to touch the Mocha as well in the upcoming future, but not right now. And in case you remember, uh, we are going to go with the shell access first. Uh, we are not going to touch the node and manga in, uh, mongoose initially, but when we are going to touch that, at that point of time, we are going to touch the mocha. 
from the starting or the very initial level, we are going to directly learn the MongoDB using the shell. And once we are comfortable with the shell, we have learned all the CRUD operation and commands. Then we are going to write test suites using Node, Mongoose, and Mocha. So that's going to be our plan of action for now. And I think that is enough of the theory that you have learned about how the things are going to work, how the action plan is going to work. We just need two more topics to be covered up for the theoretical part. Uh, the first one is big umbrella of MongoDB. And the second one is installation part. So very soon we are going to install the Mocha as well. I think that is it for this video. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so that I can keep making these amazing, awesome videos for you guys. And make sure you share it with your friends. Tell them, hey, you can learn MongoDB absolutely for free on this channel. That's it for this video. Hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you up in the next video.